This is a, uh, a rig expert. This is a AA170. The 170 here, the 170 indicates the maximum frequency. It's 100, 170 megahertz. So this particular one will go from uh, 10 kilohertz, excuse me, 100 kilohertz or 0.1 megahertz to 170 megahertz. Really cool. HF all the way through two meters. Great unit. And we're going to be using a rig expert tonight, so it'll help you understand that. Some of the features. This is a this is their the old standby, the MFJ uh, 269 is not the C. This guy here does HF all the way through uh, 500 megahertz. It does a really good job from uh, HF up through two meters. It does not do 220. It skips right over it. Whereas these others, they, well, this one stops at 170, so it doesn't do 220. This one sails right through 220 and, and, and includes it. This one excludes 220. You've got to buy the C to get that. It does 440. In my humble yet accurate opinion, <laughs> it doesn't do such a great job on the 440. It's, it's better than nothing, but I don't, li I, I don't like it. So if you're going to buy one, I would say get the C and, or get one of these other ones. What we're going to use tonight is we're going to use... Uh, this one, this is a rig expert. This is the AA600. It goes from 100 kilohertz to 600 megahertz. And it's, uh, uh, it, it'll take you all the way through so you can measure your different devices. So you might ask, why would I want one of these things? Well, you can check your dipole antenna. You can check your mobile antenna. You can check, uh, you can do f you can check filters. Uh, this one, the MFJ has a frequency counter on it. It does a whole bunch of cool stuff. And the main thing we're going to use it for, at least what I use mine for, is I, I, I build wire antennas. So what I'm going to do tonight is just give you a little bit of a, a, a little bit of heads up of what we what we were doing. So, how many of you guys heard us talking about? An N-fed half wavelength wire antenna. Who's heard of that? Sure. Okay. Yeah. This is a forty-seven to one transformer on top, and this is a one-to-one -one current balance to go to keep the RF from coming back down your coax. Okay. So that's a device that we that I built and tested, and this guy here is unbelievably flat. And I'll tell you a little bit about that in a moment. And then, in addition to that, here is a, a different uh, one that does not have the one-to-one -one current balance for isolation. The difference between the two, this one here is, and you can't see it because I wrote it on, it's a type 43. This is, you hear the different core types. You'll hear somebody say, I use type 31 or I use type 43. Another guy says, I use type 53 or 61. This is a type 43. So for tonight's uh, presentation and just for the topics, we are going to be using type 43 and type 31. And the reason is type 31 has a tendency to work better on the lower frequencies, down around 160 meters, 80 meters, 40 meters. Type 43 has a tendency to let us get up higher if you're somebody that wants to work on 15 meters and... and um, uh, and 10 meters. It works in the higher frequencies. So this, these are transformers to, for the in-fed uh, antennas. Here is a, um, this is a two-to-one transformer. You're like, what the heck would I want a two-to-one transformer for? How many of you guys put, put up a loop antenna or would like to put up an HF loop antenna? Pretty cool device. If you can get, if you can get a 40-meter loop antenna up or a 20 or 40 or an 80, you're probably going to want one of these. And this is a really cost-effective thing to do. This is just an experiment. It's not put in a box. But this is a two-to-one made out of type 43. And this guy here on the analyzer, this is a two-to-one on a type 31. So you ask, what does that do? Well, what it does is your loop antenna for the not, and, and I just want to say this out to all you folks out there in the t ham radio TV land and everybody else. Yes, we're aware that at different frequencies, the feed point impedance can change, okay? So for this application, we have picked 100, excuse me, we've picked 200 ohms on our uh, 
about approximately uh, a 100 ohm feed point impedance. So it's a two to one. So if our antenna was 100 ohms, it'll reflect back at 50 ohms, okay? Because the antenna that I put up, it happens to be in the 100 to 150 area. So I put the two to one transformer on it, and now it brings it down to where my SWR, my match is within reason in my radio and my tuner, and everybody's pretty happy. So what I did, what I did is, is we're gonna, I'm going to show you real quickly what these look like, okay? On the on the on the on the analyzer, and then we're going to do one more thing really quick. We're going to try we'll try to be done by eight o'clock here, and then you guys can come up and, and talk uh, fellowship and ask questions. I brought coax, and we're going to do this last. But anybody recognize this? No. Coax. coax. This is RG8X for the in in fed wire antenna, right here. This resistor is a twenty seven hundred ohm resistor. Because in just for our experiment applications, you can kind of uh, figure that your in-fed is going to be somewhere between 2,500 ohms and 3,000 ohms, depending on you know, how high it is, how long it is. So I picked 2,700 for uh, a, a middle of the road. So the antenna, this resistor would be gone, and you hook the in-fed wire, and it's just going to go out 134 feet. And then you're going to hook your coax up to it, and it's going to go back to your radio. This particular one was in operation until... Today, about three o'clock, I took this. I took it off my um, off my tower. I have about a hundred and thirty some odd foot piece of wire connected to there. My coax went into there. I happen to have that gray piece of coax. It goes back into the shack. It's literally less than 1.3, 1 1.4 to one from 80 meters meters all the way up almost to 10 meters. Is it the best radiator on the planet? No, but it works pretty good. And I, can, I can operate on all the hand bands, and I'm going to show you that in a minute. I can operate on all the hand bands without a tuner. And then, um, so weird. yeah, it works really good. It, now, it's, 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 a, it's kind of a, okay, I got the room to put the, so say you only have, say you only have about uh, uh, half, half of that 130 feet, right? So you got about, a, about 65 feet, you know, 60, 65 feet, give or take. Well, that'll get you, your lowest usable frequency will be about 40 meters, right? So it'll still work. And then you go, oh, gee, I don't have that much, but I want to get on the air. Okay, make it shorter and use it on 20 meters, okay? And the thing will load up. It's not, these are all antennas that are going to resonate on a ham band somewhere, okay? And, and, and it'll work. The resistor, you ever guys hear the, uh, the people say, yeah, man, you can have a perfect match. A, a resistor is a dummy low and you have a perfect SWR. Well, guess what? We're using a resistor to go to measure the transformer response across the band because it, it, the transformer thinks we have a perfect antenna. That way, when we graph it, it'll give us an idea what the response of our, in, of our, of our transformers are. And then when we test our coax, it'll show us the, what the coax is doing to our perfect antenna and our perfect match, okay? Which is, I think, will be really interesting. So the first thing we're going to do is the first, I'm going to... Uh, just for fun, we're going to use, for e to be easy, I'm going to sit down, and then we're going to just sweep. I'll put it over here so you guys can see it. Okay, so there's a sweep I did earlier. We're going to do it again. But what I want to bring to your attention, guys, take a look up there. See right there, that little white band? That's 80 meters. The next one is 40 meters. And the next one is 10 megacycles. I forgot the meters. Here's 20 meters. 15, and this last one up here is 10. So the software, and this happens to be the rig expert, and by the way, it doesn't matter which rig expert you use. You come over here, whichever one you buy, you see? You just click which, which, which box that you're, which unit that you own, and the thing just works, okay? So if we wanted to, if we were to hook up uh, Arts AA170 here, we could use it, and the software will work. And they got a new version of software. It's called Antscope 2. But their, their drivers aren't quite right yet, so we can't use that. Anyways, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to kick it off the table. Now this table probably won't affect it. So we'll come over to measurement, and what we want to do, what you do is you tell the thing, what do I want to measure? So I told it to start at 1,000 kilohertz, which is 1 megahertz, right? And then I told it to stop 
at 30,000 kilohertz, which is, thank you. And then I came down here to resolution and I put it 100 points. So what it's gonna do, it's gonna actually measure accurately 100 points across that bandwidth. And as you can see on the, uh, here, we'll go ahead and do it. At the bottom of the left hand side of the screen, you'll see it's at 40, 50, it's taking a little time, and it's going to go boom, there it is. That is the response of this device right here. This, that's fast. Yeah, this, <laughs> compared to my eight, yeah. that's fast. The, the two to, well, I'm only on 100 points, I mean, you go to like 500 points or 1,000, oh, yeah. it's like, do, 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 it waits forever. So this is a two to one transformer to use on my loop antenna. So I said, okay, uh, I put a 100 ohm resistor on it to emulate a perfect antenna, right? So what is this thing doing? What is it gonna do to my signal? Well, now you can take the cursor and you can go along here and go, well, let's go down here to 80 meters. What is it doing? Look at that. What, what's the SWR at 33.6? Can you guys see it? 1.05. Yep, yep. 1.05. And there's what's called a return loss of 31.7 dB, which is the higher the number for the return loss, the better. The lower the number for the SWR, the better. So would you say that work, would work pretty good as a matching transformer at that frequency? I'd say so. And the only limiting factor now is, is how much power will this thing handle? So this guy here is probably good for 700 or 800 watts, you know, something like that. Sideband, you might get a little more out of it. But people on YouTube don't... Uh, Quote me, because um, you could, should use a dual core or triple core if you want to handle a billion watts, okay? So you move up to here. What's another favorite band we like to use? 40 meters, right? So where are we at right there? Yeah, 40 meters. We're at uh, uh, 7 megahertz, and we're at uh, 1.07. And you notice the blue line across the bottom doesn't creep up so bad. You know, here we are at 10. So we're, what's it telling us? It's telling us that our homebrew two-to-one transformer has a reasonably good response. And we get up here to 10 meters, and we go, oh, look at that. It's still 1.3, right? So that's not so bad. So now what's going to happen if I screw up the, what if my antenna isn't perfect anymore? I just, I haven't swept it yet. I added another 100 ohm resistor. So what do you think is going to happen to my SWR? It's now, it's now 50 ohms. It's a 2 to 1 transformer. So the other side of it, my radio is going to see approximately 25. Exactly, 25. So what's that going to do to my match? My beautiful, be yes, what's it going to look like? It's thinking. Who knows the answer? <gasps> yep. So now this the the device looked at my antenna and said, "Your antenna you is tuned improperly." So now you you checked your coil, your matching device with your um, one of these analyzers, and you know that this thing is right with the with the resistor. Yes. Can I run that through an antenna tuner? Okay. If that was a real antenna? Y the answer is yes, but, the, but you don't want to do that until you've determined that I've got my antenna as good as it's going to get. Right. And but then. If that's as good as I can get it. Yep. I can run it through an antenna tuner. What will it do to my signal strength? It's going to not. It's going to match the impedance of your radio to the mismatch of the antenna system, and you're going to have some losses. And it's going to radiate what it's going to radiate because it's not a resonant antenna. Okay? So here is it two to one. So now we can go over here and we can look at the view. And let's just for fun, uh, we're going to stay clear of the flip chart. But what is, so what's that telling us right there? We're looking at the green line is what we could reactance or, or X, of, X of L, X of C. It's going to, it's like, you know what the reactance of. This blue line, the blue line is basically R. That is telling you that my resistance, see 50 is right here, right? So I put that resistor on there and now it's 25 and you go back and you look at your SWR and my SWR is too high. 
So if I were to take this, this test clip off of here and I get it back to closer to what it's supposed to be and I run it again and we'll think, you have to sing a little song. Did What's it? the red line? The red line is R and the green line is X and the blue line is Z. Now look at the blue and the red line. What did it do? They're darn near perfectly on 50, right? Yeah. And look at my reactance. Our reactance is, if we looked at the Smith chart, and we can, it'll, it'll show us which direction it went. So this transformer with that perfect antenna, which is a resistor, it is working quite well across the band. So now, if you wanted to, there's your Smith chart. And I'm not going to even get into this, but here, here it is. It's almost dead on right there. Yeah, reactance. Yep, and you can see your reactance is moving off a little. You can see as your frequency goes up where it goes over this direction. But guys, yeah. So I'm not going to I'm not going to uh, get into the Smith chart for two reasons. It's complicated, and um, I'm not a good enough teacher to show you. So. Here is the SWR, which we all know, right? And then we go back to our, our, our view, and we're just going to take a look at this, and we're going to go, bam, there's R, okay? So this is a type 31 core. So what I need you guys to do is take a look at this, and we're not going to do a bunch of comparisons. We're going to do a couple. Take a look right here. See that right there? That's at 30 megahertz, and we're at the top end of the band. We're 1.33, right? Mm -hmm. At the very bottom end of the band, I mean, we're like something crazy down here at 160, 1 1.05, almost. It's almost not even worth mentioning. So we're going to take this guy out, and we're going to take the type 31 material, which is typically better for low frequency. Now, keep in mind that um, we're using resistors, so that's pretty good antenna for testing. It's almost it's too good. But that's what we want to check our our build on these things. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our measurement. And we're going to sweep it and we're going to do exactly the same. There's thinking. Now watch the watch the ends. <gasps> yep. And why did it get better? Because type 43 material is a little better on the high end, okay? So, theoretically, you'd probably want to use this 43 material, and you'd, it, you'd get yourself a pretty dang good two-to-one match, okay? So, that's the, uh, these are the two-to-ones, and we're going to use these two-to-ones in a minute. Now, I'm going to go to really quickly, am I boring you to death? You want to keep going for about five more minutes? Four. We four? <laughs> Only four, okay. This guy here, these are both, uh, 49 to 1. This is so we can get that super high impedance, right? For the in-fed wire antenna. I hear a lot about that. Yeah, I'm going to get my 9 to 1 bound. I'm going to put a random wire out there and I'm going to use it on my tuner and I'm going to walk talk to everybody on the planet. Yeah, sure, it'll work. But we're not going to talk. We'll talk We'll talk about that. But let's measure this guy here. Give him a quick run. This is a uh, 49 to 1. <gasps> Whoa, look at that. Mm. It's different. And this is type 43 material. But what are we trying to do, guys, that's different? We're trying to just do a simple impedance match of 2 to 1, right, over a broad band. And now we're trying to wind something that will manage a broad band impedance match that's 49 to 1. It's a little more difficult. And um, so here's your hand band, right? Look at that. There's your, there's your 3.6, but it's 1.5, right? 1.3, 1.5. Is that pretty good? I'd say that you not could. Not so bad. Not so bad. I think you could get away with it. Well, we come over here. Here's uh, 40. Look at what it did at 40 meters. 40 meters is way down there. Well, that's 4.6. By the way, you notice I want to move my cursor around. It's not in perfect little increments that, that match the hand band. I only had 100 points across that whole thing. If I were to do 500 points, we, would, it, those, we, could, we could measure it even better. We're not going to do that. 
So we slide up to here and look at this. Look at that. All across the 10 meter band. Look at that. 29 megahertz is 1.09. Look at that. So we come over here and we just take a quick look. What does our resistance measurement look like? Pretty dang good. Yeah. That's, that's totally usable. So if this, this is what's inside those little gray boxes that we buy on the internet. You know, somebody uh, says, uh, one of those companies says, here's a 49 to 1 that handles X amount of watts and it costs $79. This is something like this is inside there, okay? A version of this. The little teeny capacitor that's right, that you can't see because I don't have the uh, um, camera switched over, that right there is a capacitor. That's 100 picofarad. And what that did is it, we won't go into gory detail, but you wind a bunch of windings around the core, there's a bunch of inductance, right? You go higher in frequency, and the inductance matters even more. So you put the uh, little capacitor across there, and it compensates it. And because it compensates it, it allows us to go higher in frequency. And uh, the, what happens is, is there's a balance point between not enough capacitance and too much. So you just, you just goof with it. They're cheap. They're, they're, really, they're, 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 they're really cost effective. They're like a, like a couple of bucks. So here is this. This is made out of type 43 material. I do not have a, uh, a isolation transformer, a current balance. And we talked about that. Remember, you put a current balance on your dipole in, in, in a one-to-one. -one. Why do we do that? Because we don't want RF coming back down the coax, right? So if we got this goofy uh, little uh, long wire antenna that's basically a piece of wire hanging out in the air, and there's really not, unless you put a counterpoise, you just stick it out there and use it, you're going to have some RF coming back unless you do something. So I'm going to sweep this one. This is a type 31, and I, and uh, oh, real quickly, I'll show you guys. This one here, right there, that's a compensating capacitor. There's two of them. This one I monkeyed with intentionally because on the type 31, it wasn't quite so good on the, uh, on the top end, on the uh, right-hand side of the screen. It wasn't so hot over here on this one. We haven't swept it yet. I'm going to sweep it now and you'll get to see what it is. Okay. So we're thinking and there it is. Look at that. That's pretty nice. Now it's a type 31 and type 31 behaves better where? Lower frequency. Lower frequency. It's a different mix. So and it does not so good on what? Yep, but look at this. It's super flat across the band. Up, and it's still usable yeah. right through here. And if you look over here, and we go to our, look what our, our uh, what R looks like, R, not so shabby. See, the green line is our reactance, and our reactance is running really, really good. Let's take a look. This is a good one. This is a good one. Look at the Smith chart to see where it's at. There you go. So it looks like. So we're not going to talk too much about that. That's, biz charts are complicated, but they're cool. So there is a uh, 49 to 1, or 49 to 1 with a 1 to 1 current balance and the compensating capacitors. And I took this exact unit that you're looking at right now, that exact unit, and it is feeding about 130 feet of wire. Uh, the feed point, I tested it at about five feet off the ground, and then I put the center of the wire up about 25 feet and went the other direction, and it was down about, I think it was like six feet off the ground, if that. And I got an unbelievably good flat response hooked to that piece of wire. Then I hooked that piece of wire up, used it on my 100-watt radio, and um, Don, we, I talked to you on it, I talked to uh, Ed on it, I talked to uh, a couple guys down south, and everybody said it worked good until I turned on my regular dipole antenna that was up higher and it was tuned correctly. It was better. Every, every time I compared my dipole to this, it was better. Then I took this and I put the feed point up in the air about 35 feet and then ran the other end to a pole that's about approximately 30 feet. 
I could hear better, and people could hear, the height helped, okay? And I, I, I used it on, and because of the reason it was flat, I mean, that wire, it, it's unbelievably flat, guys. It's very forgiving. Is it, the, is it the best radiator on the planet? Maybe not. But man, if you, if you need to get an antenna up, and you live in a restricted area, and all you can do is feed it at five feet in the, on the ground, go up to a tree 25 feet, and come back down to the other side of your fence, and all you can do, wind a couple of these coils. This, th that stuff's like 20 bucks to buy all that stuff and, and, and make it, okay? So we're going to move right along, and what we're going to do next is, I think is pretty interesting. What do you think is going to happen? First of all, I'm going to use my, Am and I'm not picking on Amazon, okay? The cable that I got off of Amazon, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Can I ask you something before you move on? Sure, before? yeah. So, like, let me see that. This, this guy? Yeah. Sure. So, like, the this right now, so this is, so this resistor would be out of the... It'd be gone. Place. This that, that's a, it's the antenna. Yes, sir. So this is where your long wire would come off of? Yep, exactly. Then what is, what's going on over here? Oh, this is a, the resistor to give the resistor a ground to, to measure. So, but with, with, when, with you take, when you take this out, then this is just completely it, out of the yep, way here. Yep, But mm -hmm. you don't need any sort of nope. ground or... Not with all, no. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's just the, again, yeah, it's just the one wire. wire. Yeah. Is that one wire? Oh, yeah, sure, that? sure. This resistor is the fake antenna. And the reason the line is so flat is because it's a resistor. Okay? okay? Yeah. This side is ground as far as the circuit's concerned. This side here is the, where the long wire antenna goes. Okay? So with this setup, if you hook your coax to here and feed it, and you hook 130 to 134, give or take a, a little bit of wire, and depending on how high it is off the ground, this thing will give you an unbelievably good SWR. Okay, so that's just for demo purposes. That little the little resistor is only for yeah, demo. But, but if you sniff, sniff it at both ends, take it and throw it away. And you put 134 feet. Or, yeah, or you can put 160, put 67 feet of wire on it and do 40 meters. Or you can do 33-something feet of wire and do 20 meters. Well, that question that you just asked, you're all up for <laughs> Yeah. This is just, this resistor is only here just like this resistor is here. All these resistors represent a perfect resistive antenna. That's all it's for. And you're going to see that in the next demonstration, uh, how we want that resistor to be as perfect as we can so we can see the inconsistency incons or inconsistency in the transformer or feed line that we, that we wound, okay? This, this one and this one is for an in-fed wire antenna, yes. So if you used a dipole, what would that look like? It won't. This is not for a dipole. Okay. This is not for that. Now, what you could do, what you can do, the dipole, can you guys see that? You can remove this and just use the yellow core and your dipole would connect. Can I borrow your pen? Mm -hmm. Your di your dipole would connect to here and here. That's where you choose. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. And then in the dipole, then you would you bring you would hoist this up, and what this coil this this transformer here or ballon does is it puts a what's called a high CMMR common mode rejection ratio. What that all that means is. There's enough reactance in here at, across the band to where that if my dipole, my antenna system tries to put energy backwards down the coax, the, the feed, it's going to stop it. Also, if you were to take one of these, co these, these leads, and I've literally I've done it, you can take it, you can short one of them out, and on this side of the transformer, it still looks like really close to 50 ohms. It doesn't blow your transmitter up. It, it helps balance, take your balanced line to your unbalanced line, and it just, that's all it does. There's no impedance matching going on. It's common mode rejection. And if you met, and we could do that sometime if you want. This particular one, I measured it. It's somewhere between 28 and 30 dB of common mode, which is actually pretty good. It's really good. If you can get 30 dB, you've, you've done really well. So that's what the dipole's for. These guys here are for wire antennas. It could be a dipole, but typically it's going to be for a loop antenna because a loop antenna or a uh, quad 
cubicle quad antenna, a delta loop, um, uh, a beam, a uh, multi-element beam, the feed point impedance is going to be somewhere around 100 ohms or higher. So you're going to want to build some kind or buy some kind of transformer to get it from point A to point B. So for this demonstration, we just chose to go from 100 ohms to 50 ohms because it was easy. Okay? And because I'm going to try to build a loop antenna, and I want to, I want to experiment with it. So what I'm going to do now, we know we took our type 31 right here, right? And we looked at it, and that line was super, super straight, right? So we all agreed that it works from basically 160 meters up to 10 meters. Pretty good, right? So I went and I bought, like everybody does, this is RG8X. I bought it from uh, Amazon. They delivered it to my house. It was awesome. Do you guys want me to... Do you want me to sweep it so you can see the first sweep? And then I'll really quickly change the coax over and sweep it again, okay? That way it's, it's fresh in your mind. So I've re, re swept this guy. There it is. And we can see what he looks like, right? So now I've built my perfect antenna with my almost perfect matching device. And I've ordered 50 feet of coax from, from the internet because it's so convenient. And I'm going to hook it up. And now we're going to pretend that this is my antenna system, and I stuck it out there on my pole, and I'm going to talk to everybody. <coughs> but before I do that, we got our MFJ, or our rig expert, or our comet, and we're going to check it because we're good hams, and we're going to check it. I'm going to go, what did my, what does my system look like? Anybody have any idea what it's going to look like? <gasps> what did it do? <laughs> what did it? What did this piece of coax do to my perfect eighty meters? It Man. it made it worse. What did it, what did it do to my oh, well, my perfect forty meters? The coax length is affecting the resonance of the circuit. So here, where would you think this coax? length might be is it a half wavelength uh, it's quarter. is it a quarter wavelength <laughs> this is approximately a, it's is a more of a quarter wavelength so the quarter wavelength added a bunch of reactants to the circuit so now uh, it's messed up my beautiful deal so I come over to 40 meters what's happening here at 40 meters good. why I doubled the frequency, right? I doubled the frequency, so if this was a quarter wavelength, right? And I doubled my frequency approximately. This is closer to? Half. And a half wavelength, when you're at a half wavelength at that proper frequency, what's it, from one end of the coax to the other, what happens? It's transparent. Yes, it's very close. It's never perfect, but it's very close. So as we move across here, we see... Here's a handband right here. Not so hot. Handband, okay. Handband, not so hot. Handband, not so hot. Into the handband, not so hot. Now, let's do a little, little thing. We'll just take, let's just assume that we have this coax, and I'm going to, but I don't know because I didn't measure it. I don't know what's going on. I'm trying to get my SWR meter on my radio to read good. So let's sweep it. What do you think it's going to do? I just, I just put, a, I put a bad antenna on the end of it. <gasps> Look at that. It made it worse. So my antenna now is out of resonance, right? It's not perfect. My coax is the wrong length. So, do you think I could ever adjust the length of my antenna to get it back down here below 1.5 across the band again on my hand bands? Especially on 80 meters? No. No. Nope. Adjust the coax length. It's not going to look too promising. It's not look too promising. So, if you went out and bought RG8X 50 foot and just ran it to your antenna, you can see that you're going to hit several spots that on your resident antenna it's going to make it look wrong. If you adjusted the length of the, 
of the coax, it can change it. And we'll talk, we'll do that next time. We'll, we'll actually do a workshop sometime and we'll show you how to measure and how to make your coax. Now what I'm gonna do is, real quick, cause we're gonna, we wanna be done. But it does work good in the Jeep. What's that? <laughs> it does work good in the Jeep. It does work good? In the Jeep. Okay. So, I'm gonna grab a piece of coax. This is a random yeah. length. I think this is about 75 feet of, of RG8. It's thick coax. It's got decent connectors on it. And I, I needed to have this length because I needed to get it out to my antenna, right? How long was that one? That's at 50 feet exactly. It's right off the shelf, man, 50 feet. This, one, this is about 75 feet. So I took, I took my, I took my uh, resistor off of there. So now I'm back to my perfect antenna. I'm assuming that I've, I've taken my analyzer and I walked up to my antenna and I climbed up 50 feet, I measured it, and I know it's perfect, okay? So now I put my coax in there. I'm gonna measure it one more time with my uh, coax of, cho of, of choice and let's see what it did to my perfect antenna or almost perfect antenna. Look at that. It's a little better, huh? So this piece of coax here you know, I don't know exactly what length it is. We could figure it out, but you you can look at it now, and you can see that in the 80 meter band. Look at that; it's pretty dang good. It's 1.2, so I, I'd be happy with that on 80 meters. Look what it did to 40. Kind of, it yeah, it's almost it's still below 1.5. It's still completely usable. Works really good, right? Okay, so there's a piece of just a random. Now I want to show you one, two, two more things real fast. What does 213U do? What's that? Middle grade, 213U. It's funny you should ask that. <laughs> I just so happen to have a brand new piece of 213 mil spec, which is approximately, I can't remember if it's 50 or 60 feet long, but this is, this is new stuff. It's not been outside. It's not been contaminated. It's just beautiful. So we're going to take this beautiful piece of coax. It's low loss, has a velocity factor of 0.66. We're going to plug it into here, and we're going to see what it does to my antenna. See, now that's what the random length looked like, right? Okay. Let's do a quick measurement. I hope you guys are seeing the, 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 uh, the advantage of buying one of these guys. And they all do this. <gasps> Whoa. Look at that. That's a little over, that's about 50 feet. What? Because it's a, has lower capacitance per foot, has lower loss, it's got better, it's just, just better coax. I think Art said it all when he said 213 uh, mil spec type coax. That's what this stuff is. It just friggin' works. Yeah. And when you get this stuff cut at half wavelength multiples, it's really good. How much is that stuff? And it's flexible. Yeah, it's pretty. This stuff here is about depends on where you buy it. It's between uh, sixty and eighty cents a foot, man. Maybe it could be more. I, it depends on what copper prices are. And and we bought. I bought. I bought a five hundred foot spool, and I've had it there. And I've, I'm down to uh, about one hundred fifty feet. And I'll probably. And I bought a five hundred spool, foot spool of LMR four hundred. But LMR four hundred is hard to deal with, so I didn't bring any. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take this last one. This piece of cable happens to be. RG214, a mil spec type cable. It's approximately 100. Thank you, Frank. It's approximately 100 feet. And I'm just going to do a quick measurement on this. I think I did this one earlier. And I, I'm. There we go. There you go. Now look at that, guys. That's a 100 foot piece of 214. Now, if we had a 100-foot piece of 213, it would have pretty much done the same thing, okay? And look, look at the ripples on that. It got even, it got even closer. The, it's, it's shallower. And now you can take your cursor or your, or your dial on your meter and you just go around. Look at that. 1.08, 1.1. I mean, it's just, just, it's just dead on. So what's the conclusion? Coax matters. Coax matters. The length matters, and the quality, and the quality matters. Matters, and having some kind of an analyzer 
helps. Now, you could take that MFJ, and we're going to close. I'm going to quit here. If anybody wants to see, you can come up. I'll show you. Take the MFJ, and if we want to look at uh, if, uh, Ed and uh, Art, we'll let, we'll let you take a look at their machine. You can use those same machines and uh, by hand, and you can turn the dial, and you can watch it. As you turn that dial, you watch that meter go, and it'll tell you what the SWR is all the way across. And then the other, and the other display will tell you what the uh, impedance is, the, the R, okay? So, and you'll notice, well, this guy here will go back to view on this cable because we saved it. We'll look at the R. Look at that. It's almost, it's almost perfect 50 ohms and almost no reactance. The ripple, I mean, that's, that's short of hooking it right to the unit. I don't know how much better we can get it unless we had coax, you know, two inches around and some insane, you know, dielectric. So, uh, and I'm sure uh, those of you who've, who've invested in... Um, uh, well, uh, LMR 400, you know, that's or or, or 600, yeah, hardline. hardline. It it just it just for HF, it just gets better and better, you know. I mean, it, it and and there's there is a point to which it's you know there's a diminishing returns. So, anyways, any quick questions related to this before we adjourn and just uh, do whatever we want? Yes, sir. I put an eight-inch uh, coil at the end of mine before. Yes. I'm sorry. How much do you think that's going to change the... You don't know. Here's the deal, guys. If you want to, we'll have, other than a meeting night, we'll have a workshop, and we'll actually wind, we'll get to do the coffee can thing, we'll wind eight turns, we'll put it on the machine, the, any of these machines, we'll measure it, and you could see it. What, what they're not, what some people aren't telling you is that, yes, you do need an RF choke of some kind at your feed point on your dipole. What they neglected to tell you is that random length of turns will work at a particular frequencies, but you don't know if it's working on the frequencies that you need it to work on. And what you don't know is how much isolation it's giving you between the antenna and the coax. You just don't know. And, and if you were to take some of these uh, devices that are supposedly uh, giving you isolation and, and measure them, I think you'd be surprised to find out they don't work so hot. So I took, uh, I, I took several uh, balloons that were to go from the coax to the, um, to the antenna, and I wanted to see how did, it, how did it perform in SWR, how did it perform in common mode. Almost all of the 19 to 29 dollar ones failed the common mode huge, just huge. Mm -hmm. It just they just didn't work that well. You got to buy one made for that. And then I think I know really another common uh, we got to get going here. Another really common misunderstanding is is uh, okay, it's, it's a better example. Here's my here's my um, uh, two, to, two to one transformer, right? Somebody might say, well, man, that's, you know, I got my 2 to 1 transformer or I got my 9 to 1 or 4 to 1 or whatever, right? And they go, so that's, you know, I got, I, I, I got protected against my uh, RF come down my line. Uh-uh. This is an impedance matching device. This gets point A matched to point B. So we need to consider having something. Here's my impedance matching device from point A to point B in this example. And on the, the yellow one is my isolation device to isolate the RF trying to get back down the line. So there's, there's reasons for all this stuff and there's a lot of misinformation out there about balance and coils. So, and I'm no expert, I just decided to play with it. And I'll share with you guys what I know.